Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Siren. Last time, we had a, a stealth action experience with Harumi and the Maedas, but before that, we had a second objective with uh, Kiyoya and Miyako, where we got a bottle of sake from the abandoned house, and we're going to use it today because we are going to be doing another second objective with Kiyoya and Miyako. One that we could not do before, but we can now. It's day two at seven o'clock, and it says that at dawn, Kiyoya and Miyako gazed out over the village, but they saw the sinister pillar of light. And we know where that pillar of light came from. Uh, Hisako, standing on the shore, uh, apparently created or maybe summoned the pillar of light, in which he picked something up out of the sea, and she saw a woman standing at the bottom of the pillar. Everyone else saw it, such as Kiyoya and Miyako. Miyako was terrified upon seeing the pillar, though we don't really know why. We can make some guesses. She said, it's coming. So, I mean, something's coming, and she doesn't like it. But we won't find out what's coming today because we're doing the same mission that we did before, except we're going to be doing the second objective. Now, if you remember what this mission was, this one we had to take out a brain, Shibito. Uh, that's not what we're doing this time. It's coming! What? What's coming? What happened? Right, so Miyako clearly knows something that she has not let on. Or maybe there just hasn't been time to explain it to Kiyo yet. But anyway, the objective one was drive away the Shibito brain. Objective two, get a gun. So Kiyoya is through messing around. His objective in this mission is to get a gun. That's what we're going to do. Now, Miyako is going to tell us to go fight the brain. We don't actually do that at all in this second Wait. objective. We don't have to do it, anything like that. You can't escape. We have to find the leader and fight him. The leader? Well, we won't be doing that. Uh, what we are doing is what it says at the bottom. It says, make a trap for Officer Ishida. That, of course, is the cop who uh, Kiyoya had a run-in at the beginning of the game, so it's telling us a little something of what to expect in this mission. For right now, let's do what we usually have been doing when we've been doing second objectives, and that is that we've been looking at the hints, and the hint for this mission is this. We gotta pay attention to the puddle. What puddle is it talking about? I mean, we really haven't done anything with a puddle in this level previously. But if we look at the map, hey, there is a puddle on there. It's labeled right on the map, puddle. So we have to pay attention to that. Now, we should also pay attention to first time we were in this, mich uh, this mission. What we had to do was we had to get the brain Shibito, who was right here, right? Do you remember how this went? We went down, we lit Shiro's car on fire. He won't miss it. And then we had to chase the brain up here, who went up here, then went across this bridge, and then we sort of ran around here and eventually got the brain over here. So that's the area of the level that we covered last time. One area that we did not cover was down here. And hey, that's where the puddle is. So it looks like that is the part of the level that we should probably explore just by process of elimination. All right, so I'm going to leave Miyako here. And we're going to go head on over and see just what it is we can find. We run by the lighter. We really don't need it for this mission, so I'm not even going to pick it up. We're going to run down here towards this puddle and see what it's all about. Uh, let's stop for a second and see what we can find. Yep, there's a crawler. There's a crawler by the bridge. It's kind of down where we're heading. Uh, there's someone... Not moving. And that's who's in front of us. So let's keep going down. 
we look at that, that does look like treetops. But nothing visible right now. However, if we do look around, you know, it is good to look around in Siren. We might notice that there is something on the ground here. Right there. Some kind of document. It's Naoko's resume. Well, I guess she's not going to need it anymore. Let's see what she's been up to. Let's see her body of work. All right, let's see. It says her age, uh, her measurements. It says that she likes Mongolian cuisine, and she can play the bagpipes. I'm sorry that we did not actually get to see her perform. Maybe she still can as a shibito. Maybe maybe Naoko as a shibito will find a, a set of bagpipes somewhere in Hanada and is currently tooting away happily on them. Here's her filmogra filmography. TV series, she did Eat, Our, Eat Your Heart Out in 94, Hasta La Vista, Mariko in 94, Tough Copy in 96, Murder She Cooked in 02, and did a commercial for Gumshoe Ramen Noodles in 95. There's kind of a gap there between 96 and 02. But then we go to video releases. She did Party Pandemonium in 98, Hot Pot Ninja Master in 99, The Lioness Hitman in 99, and the thing that she was doing currently for cable is Occult Japan, 2003. So that's uh, that's what she's done. It, the kind, these kind of sound like direct-to-video releases. I don't know. These don't sound like big feature films. But we have gotten the impression that maybe her career is not exactly going how she was hoping it would. But at least she has eternal youth now, you know? That's that's something. Alright, the puddle is down. Well, there's also a crawler in this direction, so for, let's first do this. Alright. Alright, now the puddle is down this way. Oh no! Is that the police officer? Yes, that is the police officer, and he is going to be shooting at us, so let's hide. And keep in mind that this is a bad thing, because he's flying. And we only have this poker, we don't have a gun, and that means we can do absolutely nothing against him. And there he goes that way. So we, the only thing we can do is hide. We cannot fight him. But if we go down here, yes, here it is. Here is the puddle, and there is a moving wire cable in the puddle. It says that the puddle is charged with high voltage. Stepping in it is dangerous. Now, I think we have seen this puddle at least once before in another mission, and that, that cable, it was not live at the time. We could walk through it. Uh, but it's on right now, so we can't actually walk through the puddle. The only thing that we can do is go back the way we came and keep in mind that there is a live wire here, and the cop saw me and is shooting at me, so I am gonna hide in here. So yeah, nothing I can do against him right now. Not with this thing anyway. How is that going to reach him? The only thing that we know is that we have to set a trap and we need to pay attention to the puddle and we have seen that the puddle has a live wire in it. So okay, there's power. Something is generating power, something is delivering power. What would it be? If we look at the map, one of the things listed on here is a power distribution box. We actually haven't had to look at that in the previous times we've been in this mission. But if we look where it is on the map, we're actually right next to it. Um, ex the problem is, is that there's been a collapse, so we're kind of blocked off here. But if we look up at the second floor, you can kind of see it on the wall. It's just that we can't reach it from here. So we need to, uh, we're going to need to go up this way and see if we can get to it. And probably it's a good idea to sight jack around in here and see if there's anyone. Yeah, here's someone. Here's a crawler. 
So there is a crawler crawling around. And he sees something kind of interesting. If you don't sight check this crawler, it's kind of, it's not the easiest thing to find that key. It's kind of a luck thing, if you didn't know about it. Well, this crawler w wants to go downstairs, but he's blocked by that barricade. Anyway, what else do we have in here? There's another crawler. So two crawlers in this place that we're in. All right, and one of them saw a key. So, okay. What should we do? Well, that way's blocked. We, what we can do is we can go up here and we can move this barricade. All right, now because we move that barricade, Probably would have been faster just to go out through the closer exit. Ran the wrong way. But at least I'm running away from the crawler. In case he decided to leave his place. So let's see where he's going. Okay, he's going. He noticed that the barricade was gone. He is heading off. No, there it is. There's the barricade. Now he's looking at it. He sees that the barricade has been moved. But who moved it? Now he's running downstairs. He's going down. Yep, and that means that we can sneak by where he was. Now, we don't have to do that. We could just have fought him. But if you want to do, you know, the sneaky, stealthy way, you can do that and get him out of here. So we can go in here, and let's see. Oh, yeah, there it is. Well, at least the camera changes perspective. So if you just happen to come in here, you would see that there's something between the floorboards. And we can use our poker to get it out. All right, we got it. The key to the power distribution box, and that's exactly where we want to go. And before we leave, let's notice that there is some light reading on the shelves. There's an old magazine, the Castori Inquirer. We got it. All right, first we got this key, key to the power distribution box. And second... Let's see, volume 66. Ominous. July 24th, 2000. What does it have to say? It talks about the bizarre and macabre XXX Village Massacre. Find out what really happened during the wee hours of May 21st, 1938, when 33 innocent villagers were brutally murdered in the largest killing spree on record. How did one man wipe out an entire village overnight? What drove him to kill... This in-depth inv investigation reveals all, but you know, a, a mass murderer seems kind of mundane compared to what's going on right now in Kiyoya's life. That, you know, that probably actually doesn't seem all that interesting. Oh, here's that engine, that generator that Shiro used before, but there's no more gas. All right. Oh, hold on. Actually, I need to go this way. I need to go to the back of this place to get to that box. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's a crawler right there. Yeah, I can see him. I'm gonna just go out this door. Yeah. And he did not see me or hear me. There's an exit to the level right here, but we can't leave. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to get a gun. And even if we could leave, I mean, we'd be leaving Miyako behind, and we can't do that anyway. All right, we found our way to the box. Now, normally it's locked, and, you know, if we didn't happen to notice that there was a key between the floorboards, we'd probably be pretty confused as to what to do right now. But we found the key, and we can unlock it. 
I've mentioned that there are times when you're expected to sight jack Shibito to see what they're looking at, and obviously this was one of those times. Because it doesn't give you any clues about that. I haven't noticed it anyway. There's a panel, controls the flow of electricity, controls that live wire that we saw. So we could turn it off. All right, the electricity is turned off. So what do we do now? Well, at the beginning of the level, it said set a trap for Officer Ishida. And the hint for the level did say to pay attention to the puddle. So we have to set a trap for Officer Ishida. What do we know about him? Well, there's really only one thing that we know about the officer. We've known it for a long time, and that is that the man enjoys his sake. He really likes it, and he probably had drunk too much of it at the beginning of the game, judging from how he was acting. And as you know, the last time we were controlling Kiyoya, we picked up a full bottle of sake. Exactly what the officer likes. So, we have a bottle of sake, we have a puddle with a power cable going into it, and we have the ability to turn it on and off. Let's see where the officer is right now. All right, there he is. He's looking down at the bridge. If we walk down here, here's the puddle. We can walk in it now. It's completely safe until it gets turned back on. We can walk through this puddle, and we can break a bottle of sake in it if we wanted to. <sighs> the smell of liquor emanates from the bottle. Well, if you can smell sake from this bottle, it's a pretty sure bet that Officer Ishida is going to be coming around. Here he is. He's flying around. He's, get, he's getting closer to the puddle. He's going in the direction of the puddle. He is a pr he's in proximity of the puddle. He's in puddle proximity. He's, he's gone down to the ground. He has gone down to the ground. He is now drinking from the puddle. Yes, the officer is now drinking from the puddle. And he's about to get as much as he can handle. So hey, it turns out that he only drinks from the puddle for like a couple seconds, and then he flies away. So that's something I didn't know. He doesn't stay there for very long. Fortunately though, he will come back. Because that would be bad if he never came back. That would have been more dramatic if I got that right the first time. We're going to shut the power off because we need to walk through that puddle. I kind of thought he would just stay there. C drinking that sweet sake. He does not. He flies away, leaving the sake. So that's what I learned. Anyway, here's the officer. Here is his gun. It's his revolver. It's lying on the ground. It is Kiyoya's revolver now. We've taken the gun, and because of that, a second objective for Kiyoya in another mission has been fulfilled. And because we got the gun, and that was the objective, mission two is accomplished. Kiyoya is now packing. Throughout the whole game, he's just been using that poker. He still has the poker, but now he has a, he has substantially better a substantially better weapon at this point. So we'll see how he uses it in the future. And I'm still surprised that the, that the cop gets up after a couple seconds of drinking. So you, ha you have to actually do it right when he drops down. That would have been bad if he actually didn't come back and drink again. If he only drank the one time and never did it again, I would just have to do this whole level all over again just to get to that one part. So I'm kind of glad he comes back more than once. Mission 2 has been accomplished. Let's continue on. To day two, 10 o'clock, Hisako, 
a continuation of a scene that we have already seen. Hmm. Why are you running away? Someone wonderful is waiting for you. You... So that takes place right after the scene where Jun shoots Kiyoya in the chest. Kiyoya falls off the cliff. Jun grabbing at Miyako's arm, and Hisako appears. Miyako is terrified. And oddly, Jun seems kind of frightened of Hisako as well. Uh, he doesn't really, he seems a little bit afraid of what he's seeing. And uh, Hisako is, seems rather ominous in this cutscene, saying that someone wonderful is waiting for Miyako. Well, that's it for this time around with Siren. We're going to save. And next time, next time I think we, I'm trying to think about, because we got to the end of a loop. I don't think there is a new mission available at this point. I think we have a couple of secondary objectives that we could do. So I'm going to have to look at the link navigator and see uh, which one which ones are available and what would be good to do for next time. So next time I think it is going to be another second objective. Um, but this time round, Kiyoya got a gun. We'll see what he does with it, I guess, in the next mission that has him. Uh, and things are not looking too good for Miyako, at least during this particular point in time. But Kiyoya at least won his little rivalry against Officer Ishida because he, he electrocuted him and got his gun. So I guess that counts as a victory for Kiyoya. I'll see you next time for more Siren.